Hey, so this is Ramon Ray, editor of Smart Hustle Magazine. And uh, who are you, and uh, who do you work for? Uh, my name is Brett Hansen. I'm the Vice President of Data Security, and I work for Dell Technologies. So, Brett, you have, like, the tough job at Dell. I mean, security is, like, a big, big deal. Hackers want to get you guys. Hackers want to get me. Small businesses. So it's like, are you up all night, or do you go to bed at peace? There is no peace in the world of security. I mean, you're right. It's it's a new world that we live in, and it's the, there is the element of the hackers. There's also the internal threat of employees, either through negligence or intentional malfeasance, stealing data as well. So there is no real rest in data security today. Great point. Um, today we talked about the aspect of a kind of a, a new. I'll let you say uh, frame it better. But we have we know disk encryption. I'd love you to share with the audience what disk encryption is. And we talked today about a move for more file encryption at the file level, at the data level. Right. My word. Can you just recap that aspect? Educate us a bit, right. and then help us understand what that means and why it's important. Well, why it's important is what's important: the data, okay. right? So focusing on the endpoint, i.e., the disk is focusing on the wrong thing. What do you really care about protecting? I care about protecting my data, which is the files themselves. So historically, when you think about protecting data when it's at rest, when it's in a dormant state, you use a full disk, i.e. I'm encrypting the device. The challenge with that is, first, it takes a lot of performance hit on the, on the device itself, but more importantly, what happens when the data moves? What happens when I plug a USB drive in there and pull data off it? Mm. How do I maintain the integrity of that encryption even as the data leaves that device because data is going to leave that device? And I think that's the big thing we're in today because we're in a world of mobility. We're in a world of working at home, a world of uh, a freelance economy. Right. So I'm assuming it's all this kind of contributing to this fresh look at, at looking at the data itself? Absolutely. I mean, you hit a great point, which is the world of work is transforming. How is it transforming? Well, first, employees themselves. I want to be more mobile. I want to work from home. I want to bring my own devices. I want to access consumer-based applications. All that creates risk. Then corporations and organizations themselves are also changing. More supplemental, more contractors, utilizing partnerships more efficiently. All of that means that data is going to flow and move more frequently. That drives efficiency. That drives an improved business environment. But from a security perspective, it introduces new risk and new weaknesses. Indeed. And then another term, it wasn't new for me per se, but I like how you said it, educate us more, and then I want to get into the uh, tool itself. Uh, right. But at rest and in motion, why are those important? You, we've talked about it, kind of hinted already about it, right. but can you recap this at rest data and then in motion? What does that mean? And again, why is it so important? So at rest data is data that is not being utilized. Okay. Your device is powered off. It's in a hibernate state or a sleep state. And I'm worried about someone taking that device, that USB drive, mm -hmm and then exfiltrating the data from that. And so I want to have that data encrypted to prevent that from occurring. Mm -hmm. We've done some recent research and found that one in every five employees has lost a device. Mm -hmm. That doesn't even count how many have lost a USB drive. Think about your own, yes, experiences. <laughs> data in motion is much more difficult to protect, mm -hmm. right? Because this is data that is either being sent via email or network file share or some other um, process, or it's data being utilized. But this is sort of the new area that we need to address. Historically, when you think about protecting data, mm -hmm. the approach has been I'm going to build a wall around my environment, my network. And that's what I've written about for years. I mean, we've all understood you, the router, program it right, and the server, and uh, your access point, and you're pretty much done. At right. the end of the day, you go home. And you don't let any data leave that environment, right. right? But how does that work in a world where employees, again, work from home? They go and use devices that are not corporate devices. But then to take it a step further, okay, contractors and supplementals, do you really want to provide them that data and then no longer have control over it? Or take the step further even further, which is say, your partners, your suppliers, how do I encourage collaboration? How do I encourage productivity? But at the same time, data is the lifeblood of a corporation. Data is the absolutely fundamental thing that allows you to compete. Do I really want to be shipping out data that could be absolutely valuable to my company and then lose all control over it? And that's what we have to address. No, for sure. And do you think, Brett, that, uh, again, my words, but do you think that companies are realizing that they can't stop, especially with the online file sharing tools? There's so many out there, three, four, five big ones. Yep. I, I, they, I think it seems to me companies back in the day were trying to lock that, stop that, yep. but maybe they've given up. I don't know. What, what, what do you think? Well, you know? There's a whole term around it, shadow IT, right? And we've seen the growth of shadow IT, and different companies take different approaches. The challenge is, is what I hear is companies that take very stringent approaches and try to lock that stuff down, what do end users do? they find a way around it. Again, going back to the survey we just conducted, we found that 72% of employees were actively sharing data outside 
of their corporate environment. They had very good reasons in their mind. And most do, I think. Of course, right? It's, it's not necessarily nefarious, but my goal is to get my job done as productively and as efficiently as, as I possibly can. That's how my corporation, that's how my organization compensates me. Data security is often not top of mind. Mm -hmm. So you have these two conflicting objectives, protecting the data, but efficient execution of my job. What we find is employees are going to go to focusing on getting the job done. And for that reason, again, 72% are sharing data outside their environment. Mm -hmm. So how do companies embrace a mobile workforce, embrace modern workforce transformation like supplementals and contractors and partners, but do so while maintaining a security risk posture that allows them to keep their data safe. And it sounds like the conflict between me and my daughter. I don't know. I'm trying on one hand to do this, and she wants to go this way. I don't know. And does she usually win? <laughs> well, we'll talk about that off camera. <laughs> <laughs> That's the challenge. Exactly. Yeah. It is a challenge. And before I get to the, I know, and what's the name of the product? I know it has a new, or we're talking about it today, product that's come out. What's the name of that? Uh, Data Guardian. Data Guardian, good. Um, another thing that, before we get to Data Guardian, is that we talked about kind of, I think, I called it IT's three levels, visibility. We talked about uh, control and protection. I think those are important concepts for us yes. to understand, whether we're talking to the IT managers, those who are maybe just starting, or even to the small business or, or mid-sized business owner. But right. can you just recap those three for me? I think it's a, it's an interesting concept as well. Well, the first thing you want to be able to do is, is know your data is. Okay. And if you talk to even a, a sophisticated company, they have great visibility to the data within their environment, mm. going back to the wall, right? Within the wall, within my network, I know exactly where all my data is. As soon as it leaves the wall, I lose all visibility and I lose all control. There's two challenges. First off, A, you can have an exploit and never know it. Or B, you have an exploit, but you have no way to diagnose how it occurred. Mm. So you can't take remediation action. Right? So you're constantly in a situation where you're at risk not even being able to see your data. The second challenge is, okay, I know where it is, but I want to control it. Right? I want to be able to project control onto that data so I can say, yes, you, being a reputable person, can access and view my data, but I don't want you sitting it to your 25 closest friends. I want to prevent you from doing that. And that's what control is all about. And the third piece is you want to have actually have real security sure actions. If I was able to see you taking nefarious activity, if I was to see you being, uh, you know, less than honest with my behavior, then I can take action to restrict that data, pull it from you, lock it down. Okay, I love it. So I, I saw a demo just a few minutes ago with your colleague, Chris, and walked me through, and I'll unpack it as best I can, yep. but then I'd love you to recap that or talk about it if I screwed it up here. So um, as I understand it, we have person A that created the data. Uh, and this is just a simple example in this short interview here, but person, person A created the data. Uh, they wanted to share it with person B, an authorized person, their peeps, cool person, as far as they know today. Um, that, and the, the, the software that I'd like you to talk about, yep. that said, okay, let it through. Yep. Person B, follow me here. Follow me here. Person B wanted to share the data with somebody else, whether they did it accidentally, intentionally, whatever. Right. But this person C is not allowed, is not authorized, shouldn't right. see it, as I understand it. Uh, the Dell software and Dell, what's the name again? I'm sorry. Data Guardian. Data Guardian. Dell's Data Guardian. It said no, in essence. And then I think the other example, am I doing okay here, Chris? Good. The other example uh, that we saw here followed up was that then person um, B. B, thank you, might have left the company or done something else. And uh, Dell Data Guardian kind of saw that as well and locked it or did whatever was appropriate. It, did I screw that up or did I say that okay? Is that you said it right. So, so think about this. Person A creates document, as you said. They want to share it outside the company. Person B is with a company they've worked with before. We're going to provide that authorization. But we're going to do so still able to control what that person does. That includes them being able to send it on to someone else. Now, if they have a legitimate reason, they can go back to the original document creator, person A, and they can authorize that user. However, if it's someone I don't feel comfortable with or I don't feel like you should be, I can say no and they don't have access. Beyond that, I can now monitor what person B is doing with my data. Right. I can see that maybe they're trying to do things which I don't feel comfortable with, and I now have actions I can take. One is we can lock it down, mm -hmm. cut copy-paste prevention, print prevention, send prevention, expiration and embargo dates. Mm -hmm. But you even go a step further and say, I no longer believe this person should have access to my document because, again, they're – behaving in a manner that's inconsistent with what I want to see, I can retract those keys and the data is no longer accessible. 
what we're trying to do is change the dynamic from locking data within a, in, an environment to allowing data to egress. Mm -hmm. Per the name, we're providing a guardian for the data. The data is able to travel with protection. It's travel be able to provide a visibility. And ultimately, we always have control over that data. It goes back to like me and my kids, man. Maybe you're watching my household. I don't know. I will not either. <laughs> you won't disclose that. Huh? I won't disclose what's going on in your household. Another thing we saw in the demo, uh, Brett, is um, for I, the IT manager side, I saw an interesting dashboard where they could kind of see what was going on with that. If you want to talk about that briefly yeah. a bit as well. So, I mean, and what we want to do is provide the right level of information to IT, right? So it's not that we're, they have to go and look at every event that occurs, but you can start to look for trends, right? A certain individual has tried to send a document on to 25 different people, and every time they've been stopped and they keep trying to do it again, that would be something that would be of concern. Or we can actually look and map where the documents are. So when we talk about visibility, we can talk not only about individuals, we also look at from a location where there are. If you're a company based in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and you don't do operations outside of Oklahoma, and you start seeing documents being opened in Eastern Europe, that might be a sign that you have a problem, and you can take corrective action. So the dashboard's all about being able to set policy in a simplistic manner, but also be able to consume information and make intelligent decisions based upon what that information is telling you. Thank you, Brett. And last point, I was at the uh, Dell uh, experience at South by Southwest a few months ago or whenever it was, my brain's off. And uh, one thing we kept hearing about, or at least I understood it, is that security, the landscape is changing. I mean, you know, politics changes, life changes, right. that it's no longer 20 years ago, 30 years ago, whatever, floppy disk, install it, install, yep. uh, you know, some yellow disk product and it's in there. It, it, things are moving forward. So that's kind of what I'm hearing today. This is how I'm taking it, that the world is changing, hackers are changing, security is changing, and, and we have to evolve. Therefore, you all have to provide solutions to meet that is that accurate? That, that's absolutely a great point right so what's changing in, in the macro level right so employees are changing how they do their work their expectations their level of focus on an environment that they believe will be allowed them to be collaborative especially with the growth of millennials what's changing in the macro level also is how corp corporations organizations are organized how they do their own business right again i'm using more partners you don't see a lot of consolidated vertical environments you see very horizontal because it's more efficient i can focus on core competencies freelance environment i don't think we mentioned that word too. yes and freelance environment as well so all of these things are putting increased friction on security right it's creating vulnerabilities that haven't been there before at the same time data itself is becoming more important whether that's because of compliance mandates from governments or because increasingly core competency is not about you know having a machine it's about the data the knowledge that you possess it's about ip yeah. and you want to be able to share that ip in an intelligent manner allow you to most efficiently drive business but do so in a secure controlled and visible manner and that's what we're providing in this tool I love it. Uh, this has been a great discussion. I think it has been. What do you think? Absolutely. Okay, great. <laughs> and one more time, what's your name and who do you work for in your title? Uh, my name is Brett Hansen, the Vice President of Data Security at Dell Technologies. Awesome. And I'm Ramon Ray, editor of Smart Hustle Magazine and um, a guy who could be a lot more secure.